Okay, this is an update video on the Packer Bell Packmate 3987 CD. Um, they're actually, the reason I'm doing this update video is because my earlier video of this on my channel was, well, it was pretty crappy. I used my old camera and, um, well, that camera was pretty bad. So, yeah, I'm just going to remake the video with this camera, which is actually my iPhone 5. So, as you can see on the front here, we have the power LED, the hard drive activity LED, the reset button, the Intel Pentium logo, the Pacmate 3987 CD um, plate there, the Packard Bell Face of Technology logo, um, a 3.5 inch floppy drive, and a 4-speed neck CD-ROM drive, which is original to the system. Yes, it is on the bottom. I will put it on the top soon. I just haven't felt like doing it. Um, and there's a power button right there. And actually, I've just noticed, you can see some discoloration right here where the spec sticker used to be. Apparently, it was removed. Um, this was actually in my grandfather's computer, and... He has a tendency to do that. He did it with his newer compact machine also. He took all the stickers off, so I assume that's what happened to it. Um, yeah, so I'll resume the video after I get it turned around and we can look at the back. Okay, so as you can see on the back here, we have the power supply. Um, right here we have the description logo and as you can see, it was made in February 10th of 1995. So yeah, February of 1995, early 1995, this computer originally came with Windows for Workgroups 3.11. Um, as you can see right here, we have those two blanking plates, which are common on these systems. Um, there's two PS2 ports for the keyboard and mouse there. Um, a serial port, parallel port, and VGA output. Um, right there on the second slot up, we have the modem. Um, above that, we have the sound card, which is an Aztec Sound Galaxy Washington 16 card. And above that, in a PCI slot actually, we have a SCSI card, which I installed. This wasn't original to the system, obviously. Um, so yeah, let me get it open and we can take a look at the inside. Okay, so here's the inside of the system. Um, as you can see right there, we have the CPU heatsink, which has actually it has a gold-plated Intel Pentium 75 megahertz CPU. So yeah, I'm, I don't know if that's rare or not, but I have never seen one other than this computer, so I'm assuming it is. Um, as you can see right there, we have some EEO RAM. Um, as you can see, it has two sticks, each of which are 16 megabytes, and it has 8 megabytes of onboard memory, which equals 40 megs. So yeah, wait, I think that is. Yeah, 40 megs. Um, let's see. Under here, uh, I put this now on the best way to get this. So right there we have the Cirrus Logic integrated video card. It is, yeah. Um, right there we have slots for video memory expandability. Um, right there on the bottom of the riser card we have an ISA slot. And actually two ISA slots. Yeah, one of which is being occupied by the modem. Um, in the top ISA slot, we have a crystal audio card, which is the Aztec Sound Galaxy Washington 16, as I mentioned earlier. This is actually a shared PCA, PCI and ISA slot. And on the top PCI slot there, we have the SCSI card, as you've seen from the back of the system. So there's the floppy drive. CD-ROM, which I'll put on the top, no need to worry. Um, under there we have a 
Western, an old Western digital hard drive. It is um, two gigabytes. Um, right there we have an AT style power connector and a card edge connector for a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Um, right there we have a Dallas or Dallas real time clock module. Um, this is actually just recently died, which I'm pretty upset about because yeah, these are kind of hard to replace the batteries in. I don't know if this one is soldered or not, but I am pretty sure it is. And something I see suspicious, I see those pin that pin out there and it says modem. I guess it's for the modem that would go in the back slots right there because I have seen a Packer Bell with a modem in one of those slots, the bottom one to be exact. Um, so, that's that. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and get the system hooked up to its original keyboard, monitor, and unfortunately not original mouse because I think it was thrown away, unfortunately. But, it's the best I can do right now, so I'll resume the video once I get it hooked up. Okay, as you can see, I've gotten the computer hooked up to its original keyboard and monitor, as you can see there. This actually is the digital controls monitor, as you can see, which I assume is more rare than the normal analog controls one. Um, as you can see, I don't have the speakers actually on the monitor. That's actually because I lost the mounting screws for it. So unfortunately I can't use that. Or I can't put the speakers on the monitor. So let's just go ahead and boot the system. As you can see, it does say CMOS battery failed, so we'll just press escape. Now this is actually running a stock install of Windows 95, so... Yeah, I don't have all the Packard Bell software on here at the moment. I do have some, though, as I'll show you in a second. As you can see, I did put the Packard Bell wallpaper on here. Okay, so now we're in Windows 95. I'll show you the system properties. As you can see, it's got a Pentium, 4MX RAM, as I mentioned earlier. Um, device Manager. There's an Adaptex SCSI card that I installed. Aztec Sound Galaxy Washington 16, Cirrus Logic Integrated Video. So that's that. Let's sh let me show you what I have installed. Basically, all I have installed right now is the normal Windows Entertainment Pack for Packard Bell and the Packard Bell Audio Utilities like Audio Station, which I love. I love this program. It's so cool. Some reason the CD drive glitches. See, look, it's like constantly flashing the LED, and in turn constantly makes the hard drive LED flash, and you can see it's in sync. Yeah, I don't know why that is. It actually does it even when you're not in audio station. It just doesn't do it as rapidly. As you can see. If anyone can tell me why that is, I'd appreciate knowing. <laughs> because it's kind of weird. So, it could be because it doesn't load the CD-ROM driver in DOS like is common with the normal master CD install of Windows. So, I also have Microsoft Office 97 installed, as you can see. The Beak. 
PC Dome Packer Bell keyboard as you can hear. There you go. That's that. I have installed a newer version of Internet Explorer. I don't know why I did that, but I did. As you can see, I have some DOS games on here. Um, what else? Play some ski for you, why not? There you go, some ski free for you. Fortunately, I don't have any Packer Bell games on here because, like I said, it's not the stock install of the Master CD. Alright, that's that. Let's play a DOS game, show you how that works. As you can see, this monitor is very dark, and it stays like that for a while, and after it's been on for about, I'd say about 10 minutes, 20 minutes maybe, it'll get back to normal. So, once again, if someone can tell me why that is, or if it's just how these monitors are, crap. Well, yeah, you get the point. Exit out. As you can see, we are now back in Windows. So yeah. Oh, I also have um, 3D Ultra Pinball installed as well. You can go ahead and play that one up. The audio is actually very quiet in this. I don't know why. Should turn the music all the way up. Subdue colony. And the sound effects are really loud. That's decent MIDI. This is using FM synthesis, obviously. So yeah, let's turn that down a little because the sound effects are loud. Whoops, that was a really big fail. Okay, we're not. And I kind of forget the controls. Oh wait, never mind. Alright, sorry about that. I can't really do it with one hand. So let's just exit out of that. So, that is an update video on my Packer Bell PacMate 3987 CD. Hope you enjoyed this video. Shut down the system.